The stadium of the future design is here, and we have the guys behind it. Jaguars president Mark Lamping and HOK design principal Peter Broder. All right, we, we saw the announcement. First downtown, Jacksonville.com, the Jaguars social media channels. So, Mark, it's been a long road to get to this point. How did we get here? Well, it's a big day for sure. You know, we, we first started the discussion, uh, the public dialogue regarding um, the need to deal with this, the, the, the stadium back in 2016. And three years ago, we began a formal process with the city of Jacksonville. And, um, you know, today marks the end of that three-year process with the unveiling of the design. It was a very extensive process. It began with a thorough evaluation of the existing stadium, uh, which led us to the conclusion that um, there was a possibility we could uh, meet, meet our needs through a renovation. Uh, we then talked to our fans and other stakeholders, primary amongst them the University of Florida, University of Georgia, the Tax Slayer Bowl, got input from them in terms of what they would like to see in a stadium of the future. Uh, we then had a very extensive design competition. Uh, firms from across the, comp uh, the, the country uh, presented their conceptual designs. And uh, last December, we selected uh, uh, HOK. And since then, we've been refining the design, uh, working on the, the constructability, working on pricing. And we were just very excited to be able to unveil today uh, you know, what the future could look like. So Peter, obviously the, some of the things that Mark just talked about probably made this project so appealing for HOK to, to try to jump in and get involved. What stood out the most? Absolutely. Uh, the potential for this project as a catalyst, not only for the surrounding development, for all of downtown Jacksonville, uh, was enormously exciting for us, really from the outset of the design. Uh, the design process was equally thorough, as Mark outlined, um, and we really prioritized um, fan comfort and fan experience, uh, first and foremost, throughout every decision made through the design process. Um, and that factors into some of the amenities that you see um, in the, the artwork that was unveiled today. Um, tremendously excited about that. And it really begins with that experience as shown here, uh, walking the promenade and entering through a new landscape and new garden ways that lead you to the concourse and to the front door of the building. Uh, the concourses themselves now significantly expanded as shown here, um, expanded to the point where we've now doubled, tripled, and in some areas quadrupled this, the width of those concourse spaces. Um, a lot of discussion and excitement, obviously, around the facade and the roof. Uh, that was designed in such a way, again, to maximize fan comfort, to reduce solar heat gain, um, to shield from inclement weather. And um, it, additionally, uh, it becomes a really signature and iconic element to the design as well. Um, it's seldom, I think, that renovations are discussed as an icon, and um, this venue certainly has the opportunity to be just that, an icon. Mark, to that to the point, uh, he was talking about the roof. I mean, that, that was really the number one thing you heard from fans was the comfort in the stadium, the sun, the way it sets here in the afternoon in the fall. The east side of that stadium gets burned up no more with this design. Yeah, well, you know, we had said any solution does that, that does not bring shade on every seat, uh, we'd be doing a disservice uh, to our fans. So, you know, the, the concept that uh, HOK came up with you know, we think is just brilliant because what it does is it, is, it, is it reflects the heat, it provides the shade, but it doesn't do it in a way that it diminishes the views from inside the stadium looking out. So what looks like a metal reflector around the stadium you know, is actually a material that's very much like reflective sunglasses. It reflects when you're looking at it from the outside, but when you're inside, you can look, look right through it and enjoy these tremendous vistas of the St. John's River of downtown. And, and all that Jacksonville has to offer. That sounds like a sponsorship idea for, to me, uh, Mark, uh, looking ahead. All right, so the flexibility of this space, guys. I mean, you mentioned some of the other stakeholders in the stadium and maybe some ideas down the road for other events that could come in here. How important were those discussions in the design phase of, you know, more seats, less seats, uh, different setups and everything? Certainly. It starts with the seats, uh, and it actually starts with the roof, too. Uh, maximizing the full usage of this venue in a multipurpose fashion starts with a full roof canopy. And so that was central to the design decisions. Um, from a seating standpoint, definitely thinking about flexibility uh, for NFL uh, events, the ability to um, play to a home crowd of around 62,000 seats um, was first and foremost part of the design. But then the flexibility to expand for multi-purpose events for the Florida Georgia game. Um, we wanted to design the expansion seating in a way that was as seamless as possible. Um, and that, that certainly factors into creating a 
terrific fan experience for those Florida Georgia fans or uh, attendees of, of any um, of these expanded events, whether that's the Gator Bowl, the college football playoffs, um, international soccer. Uh, that was certainly factored into the design thinking too, um, not just from a seating flexibility standpoint, but from a, uh, from a character standpoint too, creating a truly international uh, stadium for soccer events. There's a lot of new stadiums that have come online the last few years around the NFL, Mark, but this one looks to stand out. I mean, this is a unique design and idea, and the functionality that could go with this thing is really fantastic. Well, we don't think we have to make many sacrifices by going with a renovation versus a new build, and we get so many other positives. I mean, just think about the sustainability. Mm -hmm. You know, we'll be using uh, so much fewer natural resources uh, to make this Stadium of the Future possible. Um, and it's significantly less, less costly, you know, to, to build the stadium that we uh, uh, released today, to do that on a greenfield site someplace else here in Jacksonville um, would cost about $2.4 billion. And uh, the cost of the renovation, obviously, significantly less than that. You know, we see some of the renderings outside the stadium as well, but how important is this stadium and this project to the, the city of Jacksonville and downtown Jacksonville in the future here, Mark? Well, I think it's critical. I mean, I think we're at a very important time in the history of Jacksonville. The city's on fire uh, on, on every measure. Uh, the Jaguars are in an ascending position. And, you know, the primary purpose is to um, have our downtown, like so many other downtowns across this country and uh, cities similar size of Jacksonville or smaller or larger, to have that downtown become a real economic engine that can generate the resources to help invest throughout the community, particularly in those, those underserved areas of, of Jacksonville. You know, what we hope to do uh, is try to replicate the impact of what is, what's been so positive with um, the growth of the Brooklyn La Villa area that's you know, to the, to the west of downtown. And you can physically see how that investment in the Brooklyn area now is moving eastward towards, towards downtown. Um, we think we can replicate that, but we would do it on the east side of downtown. And it means bring, uh, 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 bringing a new neighborhood where people have a chance to live, where they have a chance to work, uh, that serves as a great connector between the St. John's River to the sports complex, to the out east neighborhood and beyond. And the stadium being an, an important part of that. Um, and it's not just you know, securing the future uh, of the Jaguars. It's, it's protecting the, um, the very important uh, uh, Florida-Georgia game that has happened here every year and is, is something that is really important for all of us here in Jacksonville. Uh, trying to elevate the, uh, the Gator Bowl so it could be a legitimate uh, candidate to uh, become part of an expanded college football uh, playoffs. To be able to attract other events, um, international soccer, uh, you know, we, we mentioned, but concerts and, and, and events that can make a big impact in this community. And there isn't a, a new stadium or arena that's being built around the country that isn't being master planned uh, you know, with an entertainment district as part of it. Because as these rights holders, people that, 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 that make the decision on where these events go, they want to make sure that their that they're fans uh, that their customers have things to do before, during, and after these events. And an investment like this, even as far as the NFL is concerned, you know, puts us in a legitimate position to be able to compete for the NFL draft. And I think all of those are, are big things for the community, and you know, I think now is our time. Next step in this process is getting out in the community. 14 community huddles. I think you're on the schedule for all of them, Mark. <laughs> you're going to have a busy couple of weeks ahead. <laughs> what can we expect from these events? Well, what we want to do is, is uh, you know, share our message with the community. I mean, this has been three years' worth of work in collaboration with a lot of people, but there's a lot of others that, you know, we haven't heard from yet. And what we want to do is do it in a, in a very formal way. So, you know, starting Monday and continuing over the next 10 days, we will be uh, going out into the community. We will be holding uh, 14 uh, community huddles. Uh, we will share more details uh, behind the design. Um, uh, ask for comments, uh, ask for, for suggestions, uh, take into consideration that input, and I think we'll end up with a much, we think we have a great product right now, but I think we'll end up with an even better product after we go through this process. Jaguars President Mark Lamping and HOK Design Principal Peter Broder, the stadium of the future is here.